All right, 500 GT back to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is i got to build this thing up and do some test flying on it. And once I get that all complete and I know it's going to be flying and everything works properly, then I'm going to go ahead and install it in my Apache fuselage here. Um, this Apache, uh, I got this at Sky Hunter Hobby. Really cool. And this 500 GT is going to look badass in this. So I can't wait. But first things first, got to get this going. So um, to start off, the equipment here that I'm going to use to build up my 500 GT, start off with the radio system. Uh, got to have a good radio system. Uh, when you get into like, you know, 500 size helicopters, um, you really got, you really, really want to have a nice radio system. There's a lot of cheap radios out there. Um, Hobby City has a couple of them. Uh, there's the X-Heli. X-Heli has the one, the Exceed RC. Those are great transmitters. Uh, I know a lot of people are using them for, you know, 500 size helicopters and even now on some of the 600 size helicopters. But I got to say my own personal opinion is you really want to have something nice, something like a Spectrum, a Futaba. Um, JR, really, I'm like, you know, something quality. Uh, I just, I don't know, a 500 size helicopter, it goes wrong, <laughs> you're going to get hurt, you know. I'm like, I don't know if it could kill you, but it could come close. Um, so that's why I'm just, you know, you really want to have a nice radio system. Especially if you've got, you know, uh, say a $700 helicopter flying around, you really want to trust it to a $60 radio system? I don't. So get yourself quality radio system. I'm using DX6i. Um, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the cheaper ones, the Hobby City one and the uh, Exceed RC. I'm just saying personal opinion, preference, something quality. Uh, and then when it comes to the receiver, you got to have, uh, in my opinion, when you get to a 500 size helicopter, you've got to have a receiver that comes with a satellite antenna. The reason being is the helicopter's so big that with just one satellite or one receiver, like the AR6100 or the AR6110, it's very easy, easy for the signal to get blocked just because of the size of the helicopter. So that's why you want to have something with, you know, satellite antenna. So that way you can, you have, you know, more antenna. It's even less of a chance of losing signal. Um, now, I've had this happen. I've lost signal on one of my old, uh, my old eSmart helicopter crash. It was a very expensive crash, all because I tried to use the AR6100 instead of an AR6200. So... That's the receiver I'm going to be using. Uh, moving on real quickly, because it's easy. My gyro, got a Futaba GY401. Um, there's a lot of the cheaper alternatives. I'm not saying they're bad, but I want something quality that I can know I can trust. I know I can trust that. Uh, the servo that I'm going to be using with it is a Futaba 9257 tail servo. These match together work great. Um, so that's going to really take care of the tail of the helicopter. Uh, the servos here, my cyclic servos, and because uh, this takes a kind of weird size, so um, I got these Turnigy Metal Gear servos. These are actually really nice, and they're pretty cheap, too. I got links to them on my website, so if you go to my website, you can find the link to them. Just click on a picture or something, but nice Metal Gear, really cool. Um, you can see here, it's not a micro size, not a micro size servo, it's not a standard size servo. Right in the middle. So that's what I'm going to be using for the cyclics. Uh, my motor, I've got a T-Rex 500 motor, and this is a 1600 kilovolt motor, and I'm going to be running mine on a 15 tooth pinion for now. Um, what it is, is my original, initially rather, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up with a 5 cell battery uh, to run on 5 cell, so I'm going to use a 15 tooth pinion. I am going to go up to a 16 tooth pinion so that I can go down to a 4 cell battery. Um, because this is going to be in a scale helicopter. It's going to be my Apache fuselage. I don't need extreme power or anything like that. Um, and four cell batteries are cheaper. Plus, I can double the four cells up using my six cell or my 600, or I can just use regular four cell in my plane. So, uh, but just you know, cost of the battery is a little cheaper on the four cell. That's why I'm going to go with that. But when I do that, I got to switch paint into a six cell or a 16 tooth. Uh, anyways, moving on here, my speed controller. I've got a Hobby Wing. Uh, 80 amp speed controller and this one is a opto series so it does not include a BEC and that's what this is I've got a max pro 5 amp BEC um, anytime you get into an ESC over 60 amps my personal opinion okay is to use a separate BEC they wire in so they still run off the you know just one plug but this handles all the power for your receiver which handles the power for your servos now 
some of the ESCs come with this built inside, but that just means it's kind of doing double duty. And when you get into these bigger helicopters that require bigger ESCs, uh, you know, personal preference, it's a little like added insurance that, you know, if this fails, you'll still have power through this for all your servos and everything. So if, you know, something happens to your ESC in flight with this, you'll still have control of your servo so you can, you know, try to land it as controlled as you can um, versus if the, you know, you have a B, uh, ESC that has the BEC contained in it. If this fails, you're just, that's it. <laughs> Good night. So anyways, that's what I'm using. So now I'm just going to go through some of the steps of installing some of the stuff and set up and then I'm going to go test it and get it in the Apache. Okay, so I'm starting off with installing my cyclic servos. Um, so obviously you can tell here I took the rotor head off so I can get the main gear out of the way um, so I can have easier access to mounting this stuff. Um, so uh, the servos here, as I said, this takes kind of an unusual size servo. Now if you just take your servo and you put it in here, you're going to find that there's a lot of room. And that's okay because the kit comes with these little spacers. These things are pretty cool um, because it allows you to put your screws in the top hole and use this little spacer and the screws will come right above the bottom of this little plate. Um, I got some pictures here I'll show you just so you can see. But it's really cool because you make it so that you use the spacer on one side, on the bottom side one way, and then on the top you turn it around so you just got the regular flat side and you screw into that. Um, and uh, the servos here, uh, when you get these, you get these little rubber grommets you got to slide into place here on the ends and then you got these little metal caps or sleeves rather that you slide down through there and I just use needle nose to hold them because they're too small for me to actually grab uh, so anyways like I said using the spacers here I make it so that I put the screws through these top holes and then that allows it, and I use the spacers on the bottom so that it's all set and good. Um, and you can actually kind of see, so this side here, I use the spacer so that it push the ser uh, servo forwards more, and then I've got the spacer turned around so that I've got the flat side facing the frame just to screw into. So that was that, um, and you can see here real quickly how that I've got that servo mounted as well as my tail servo. So uh, that's it for mounting the servos. I'm just going to get this other servo mounted and then I'll keep moving on.